Okay, in this video I'm going to um, begin uh, covering uh, three-level univariate regression models um, and the presentation is uh, actually coming from uh, chapter four of this textbook right here and uh, the data set is actually was downloaded from this uh, website. Um, basically what we're going to be doing is looking at um, accounting for variation in student level uh, math achievement. Um, and so we, we essentially have 9,196 students who are nested within 516 classrooms and those classrooms are nested within 160 schools. So we are essentially going to be trying to uh, look at um, level one predictors or student level predictors of math achievement along with uh, classroom and teacher level predictors at level two uh, along with school le uh, level predictors at level three. So uh, unlike, uh, you know, as you can see, this is a little bit different animal from a two-level multi-level model, which um, can be, is, seems a little bit more straightforward. But in this case, we're looking at, uh, you know, specific level one predictors along with contextual factors at the classroom level and then at the school level. So the data set um, associated with these examples um, looks like this. This is, this is basically coming from that uh, data set that was downloaded from the website. We have one variable which is called school code and uh, it's a unique identifier for each of the 160 schools in the data set. The next variable is teacher ID uh, and this is the unique teacher identifier uh, within the data set. So uh, each of the 516 teachers has a unique identifier uh, that ranges from 1 to 516. The next variable is uh, teach the teacher identifier within each particular school. So you'll notice that we have um, uh, teacher one, teacher two, teacher three, teacher you know four, five, uh, and then you know these all these teachers are you know essentially nested within school one. Then we start back with one through um, uh, teacher ten in. Uh, and actually teacher 11 in school two, in school two. So, um, and so we need to have this variable right here that identifies um, the level two um, units or teachers or are within each school. Uh, the next variable is uh, math achievement. So this is the level one outcome variable. And so this is what we're interested in predicting uh, at the student level. So like I said, our, our main goal is we are going to be trying to account for variation in level one uh, math achievement as uh, by incorporating level one predictors, uh, level two predictors, and even level three predictors. Uh, this variable right here, this is low SES, and like I said, this is going to be a predictor uh, ultimately. Actually, we'll probably be using the grand mean of, of this, but uh, the way this variable is coded at the student level is zero represents a uh, student who is not low in SES, and one represents a student who is low on SES. So each student is coded either being low on SES, which is one, or zero, which means that the student is not identified as being low on SES. This variable right here is a uh, level two predictor, and this is essentially uh, teacher effectiveness. And you can see that you know for every case um, uh, associated with uh, you know a given teacher within a given school, you can see that it's going to be the same value. So. Uh, you have essentially teacher one and school one. This is uh, teacher effectiveness for that that teacher. We also have uh, a class mean for low the low SES variable, which is basically the classroom proportion the proportion of um, students identified as low on SES within a given teacher uh, within a given school. So there you go. So at any rate, we're going to start off with um, looking at a, um, a null or no predictors model. So that's actually the first demonstration in the um, in the book, and so we'll we'll like I said we'll just start there. So to do this, we'll go to uh, analyze mixed models and linear. And so now we'll move. In this case, we're going to move um, our level three identifier over as well as 
the nested level two identifier. So we're going to move school code over, and then we're also going to move over um, the the school level uh, teacher identifier. So we'll move that variable over. Um, so next we will move uh, our uh, level one outcome variable over to the dependent variable box. Um, if we click on fix, there's nothing really to change on this. Um, but under random, what we're going to do is we're going to we have to lay out random effects at two levels now. So we're going to move school code over, which is the level three identifier. We're going to click on include intercept and uh, click on scaled identity. Then we're going to click on next and we're going to add then the level two uh, uh, random component. So we're going to click on include intercept. Uh, we're going to move um, this, uh, click on scaled identity for the co covariance type. And now we're going to move both the school code and the, uh, the nested teacher ID uh, code over to the combinations box. Click on continue under estimation. The presentation in the textbook actually utilizes maximum likelihood, so we're going to st stay uh, true to that uh, uh, demonstration. And under statistics, we'll ask for parameter estimates, test for covariance parameters, and then covariances of random effects. All right, so now when we click on OK, we get our output. And really, for the most part, what we're, what we're interested in is just testing the variance components themselves. So really what we're trying to do is to determine is there, or answer the question, is there significant variation at one or more levels that we might account for by adding in um, predictor variables at those levels? So you can see, first of all, this is the level one. Uh, we're talking about the variance of the residuals. So this is the variance of the residuals at level one. You'll notice that we have a walled Z test, um, and essentially the null hypothesis is, um, you know, that um, our variance estimate is is uh, zero. Um, now the fact of the matter is is that we can't um, have a negative uh, variance. So really, the what we really are are going to be doing is is um, conducting a one-tailed uh, Z test, if you will, and basically testing in the upper tail of the Z distribution. So technically speaking, the p-value that is printed out right here uh, will be half of what, uh, or the, the p-value uh, for the test is actually half of what's printed out here. Uh, in this case, it's not really going to matter. Um, if I was writing this up, I would just say you know, p is less than 0 .001 uh, for that particular effect. So it looks like there's variation to be explained at, ver at, at level 1. At level 2, we are modeling or you know, um, looking at the variation uh, of the intercepts at, at, oh, excuse me, this is level three, excuse me, level three. At the level of, uh, at the school level, this is the variation um, in, uh, in intercepts at, at the school level. And so in here, you, we can see that we have significant variation indicating that we potentially could add in school level predictors of the variation in, uh, in intercepts. And then here we've got essentially the teacher classroom level, and so this is the variation at that level, and this is level two. And you can see that we have significant uh, variation that can be accounted for at that level. So theoretically, then we have we could add in predictors at level one, at level uh, three, and at level two. That may help to um, account for uh, variation in math achievement. Um, so if we wanted to break down the proportion of variation um, that um, that is occurring at each level, um, you know what we can do is we can just take this information right here and essentially um, here's just a, a little example of um, something I came up with. It's just like it's just uh, computing uh, the interclass correlation for for three levels. We're looking at um, the proportion of variation associated with each of the levels. So you can see right here at, uh, at level one, the residuals, uh, this is the variance estimate. So I'm just going to put this in for uh, right here. I'm going to straighten that out a little bit. And then uh, the level two, uh, the uh, level two variation is this. So I'm going to put this in, level two variance. And then we have uh, level three, and I will put that right here. 
uh, and then uh, this right here is just simply so this is basically reflecting the proportion of variation at um, at um, in the uh, math achievement um, accounted for at each level so basically 80 percent of the variation uh, in the um, in math achievement uh, is occurring uh, at level one uh, about 7.9 percent is occurring uh, between uh, classrooms and teachers and then another 11.4 percent is occurring uh, between schools so um, essentially uh, these were just computed by take by first you know summing these values up and that's where we get the sum of these variance components and then we're just dividing uh, each individual variance at a given level by that total